Red Max Entertainment, turning music into memories. Hello guys, this is Brandon Havrilla back from Red Max Entertainment. Today we are bringing you a My DMX 3 software crash course. Now what this crash course is bringing you is basically everything you need to know about My DMX 3, mostly the key features in a very short amount of time. Now the first thing would be patching fixtures. So in My DMX 3 here, you're going to want to click on this patch window if you're not already on it, and then you're going to want to find your fixture. So I'm going to use a 12P hex by American DJ. So I'm going to grab this and let's put it in. Um, you could click around the different modes and you can see it's changing the number of channels. Let's run it in six channel mode. That's mode one. I'm going to drag and drop it in. And I'm going to drag and drop another one in. So I have two of them right there. Another way to do it would be click it, choose the number of them you want and click patch. That's going to patch you in a third one. Now I'm going to patch one more just so we have four. So the next step would be in your edit tab, and this is making scenes and groups. You'll notice a big new feature in My DMX 3 is this groups tab, allowing you to add more groups of scenes. Now what this is going to do is give you more control over both your lights and um, your different fixtures and your attributes of your lights. So the main way people will control their groups is by fixture. So for example, they will have pars in one group. And the next group will be moving heads. Now that works great. And then you could add another one for all your different types of fixtures and you can control them each separately. However, what a lot of people do not think about doing is using these different groups to control different attributes of your lights. For example, group one, two, and three can all control your moving heads. However, group one controls what gobo by using the gobo, sli the gobo slider. Group two can control the color of the gobo by using the color slider. And group three can control the pan and tilt or the location of it. So you can control it that way and um, have a lot of control over each individual attribute of your light. And then by using a MIDI controller or even just the live tab in the software, you could really control an awesome show just using those different attributes of your fixtures. Now, creating a scene could not be easier. I'm going to delete a few of these groups real quick, but basically to create a scene, all you're going to want to do is start in the group that you want to create the scene in, and you're going to click the add button. So right here we've adding scenes. So I'm going to create four of them real quick, and we're going to start in the first one. So first off, when you click on the scene, you want to edit over here in the properties window, you can name it. So I'm going to name it red wash. Now we could also change the color of this. We have a drop down menu of about eight colors or so. So I'm going to choose red because that's what this scene is. Now with that said, what we could do is come down here to our 12p hex or our general. Our general is going to look like my DMX 2.1 software where you see all 512 channels down here. Or you click on 12p hex and you're just controlling the 12p hex. Now you'll notice all of the fixtures are highlighted here. So I could just go ahead and drag them red. And I can control their other attributes here as well. Now, for example, if I did not want to make all of them red and I only want to make these two red, I could just click and drag, select those two and make them red. Then I can click and drag, select the other two and make them green. And it's that simple to control your different lights. So for this one, I'm just going to drag them all, make them all red, get rid of the green. There we go. Now I've got a red scene. That's the very basics of creating a scene. Now with that said, what about a multi-step scene? So for scene two here, I'm going to name it red slash blue and this is going to be a red slash blue chase. Now what I'm going to want to do for this one is add more steps. So in the steps window you can click this add button and add however many steps you want. You can control the fade time of the steps and the hold time of the steps. So I'm going to leave that timing how it is right now. And the first step I want all of my fixtures red. So I'm going to click and drag and bring up the red slider. Now when I click on step two you'll notice they're back to how they were which is blank. Then I'm going to make them blue click on three, have them all highlighted, make it red, and four is going to be blue. So now you'll notice that as I click on these, it's red, blue, red, blue. If I click on the first one and press the play button, you'll see the scene play back. And right now it's got a one second hold time on it. Now to change all these times at once, you can click this little clock symbol, 
choose all steps that's going to apply it to all these steps and you could adjust the hold time and adjust the fade time too so now if we play this back you'll notice that it's a two second hold and you'll notice that it's a two second fade so here it goes it's going to start to transition into blue now it's in blue for two seconds and it's going to transition into red that's the basics of creating multi-step scenes which you can get very creative with um, especially using the effects generator now with that being said that brings us to our effects generator so I'm working with 12 P hexes which for those of you who do not know are just parkan so I could use a matrix effect and you could also use like curve effects and pan and tilt effects for your moving heads pixel effects for um, fixtures that allow pixel mapping so I'm gonna click on my matrix effect I'm gonna click add and you'll notice I get this box of colors changing and if I drag it over my fixtures you'll notice they're all changing color as well so with that said now I apply this matrix effect and I could add colors and I could remove colors based on this color wheel to the rainbow of colors I have I could also choose different ones so I can add a spiral effect here I could add a butterfly effect it's like a radar going across the fixture so I could choose my effects in there once I get it all set basically I'm gonna to want to click generate here and you'll notice that new scene is checked off so when I click generate it it's gonna add another scene to what we had now this new scene you'll notice when you click on it has a lot of steps that's the number of steps it took to generate that sequence so you'll notice as you click through them the reds down here are slowly changing in order to create that scene so when we play it back from the beginning you'll notice there's our scene of that radar that we were just using in the effects generator except now it's in one scene that we could play back so let's call that radar we could again change the color of that to make it red so it matches what the color actually is now the next step is fading between scenes and we learned in the red slash blue scene here that we could fade in between individual steps of a scene but how do we fade in and out of the whole scene so if I have this one red and then I have this one blue I want it to fade into this scene well what we're gonna have to do for that one is um first off create a blue scene alright guys sorry about that so what I did was just created a blue scene with all of them blue so that we can show the fade between these two scenes now basically what we're gonna want to do is go to the red wash scene the first scene we want to add the fade to and over here in the properties window you'll see this fade option you're gonna want to turn that on by clicking that switch and then over down here you can add the seconds so I'm gonna make it a two second fade in and a two second fade out for example if you only want it to pop in really quick but then fade out over three seconds you can just turn up the fade out and leave the fade in off so now what's that said this scene will do that however this scene will not so to get the blue to fade in as well we're gonna do the same thing I'm gonna add a two second fade time and what you'll notice is these are not gonna fade just playing them when you play this here it's just gonna play this section right here the the peak of the you know of the curve because you're not really telling the scene to come on or off it's just playing and looping that area so what we're gonna want to do to see these actually fade down here is come into the live tab now with the live tab said you'll notice that sometimes this button right here is clicked off with that clicked off these are just gonna turn on and off so a lot of people will ask well why aren't my scenes fading that's the reason right there you want to make sure this button is clicked so it's white and then with that said as we switch you'll notice it fades between the scenes now with that said while we're in the live tab here the live tab is where you can control your show just in this um, view right here so when you have multiple groups you can move them around move the scenes around the edit tab and this is how you can control your scenes now a cool tip if you have a lot of scenes being programmed is press this little arrow up here the one pointing up and it will close all your scenes into this small view so you can click on them individually now you can also pop that down and just close some of them if you want to close every other one you can do it that way too basically all you're missing is this loop function um, the loop view showing you that it's being looped which isn't that important in my mind now also in the live tab here is where you can attach your MIDI trigger so if you're using a MIDI uh, you know device with this a USB MIDI device you can right click on any of these scenes and you're gonna go to shortcuts and edit MIDI mapping now what that's gonna do is bring up this little MIDI triggering box where you can control all your MIDI sections um, 
and basically you can tap the MIDI button and it should adjust these numbers automatically for you and then you press OK and that MIDI trigger is going to save to that scene. Now with that said, let's skip over to the last tab here which is the show tab. Now where this can be used is with the iPad remote app called Easy Remote. You could use it on iPads, iPhones, Android devices, pretty much any touchscreen device you could use this easy remote app it's free from the app store or from the google play store and uh, it allows you to control your fixtures over a wi-fi network now you do not need wi-fi you could use a router to create a network but the two devices do need to talk over some kind of network so with that said when we open this up here down here you're going to want to make sure this remote button is on with that said you could choose your device so i'll choose iphone 7 now what you'll notice is you can choose the scale of it. That's the scale of the buttons. Do you want them super big on your iPhone? Do you want them really small? It depends. So you can mess around with the scale here by changing these buttons. And the other thing you'll notice is now when you connect your iPhone and you recognize the device, you're not going to see anything on the iPhone. It's going to be blank and there's going to be no options to do anything on the iPhone itself. Where you're going to do all that is here, which is really cool because now you could save the shows on here and connect any device, whereas with 2.1, you saved it to the device. So you had to transport that data somehow off the device onto another device if you wanted to use two iPads you know you'd have to program the show twice or find a way to copy that file now you save it to the show itself so you can connect any device and control it from there so with that said what we're going to want to do to add buttons to control your scenes is this add button here you can click on it here it looks like the youtube play button then you can choose custom name you can name your scene so i'll say red wash just like it corresponds to our scene there you can choose the size of it so if i want it for these boxes it's going to be four by four it's gonna be a big box or four by one or four by six whatever you want to make it so I'm gonna make it four by three for the purposes of this you could change the color of it so I'm gonna make it green and then I'm gonna make the text red because that's the color of the scene you could also choose an icon here so if I want it to be this play button showing that it's playing that's what I do now with that said now you come down here to the association that's what scene it's going to trigger so it is on red wash but if it wasn't and you wanted to make it another scene you could click the minus sign on whatever's there click the plus sign and this is going to bring you to your scenes presets groups and shortcuts so I want it to control a scene and then I want it to control my par scene and I want it to control the red slash blue now I want it to play and stop the scene, not just play or stop it. So if I want to create two separate buttons, I could do that, or I could just create one that's play and stop. Click OK, click OK, and there's your button. Now with that said, you can go up here, click the edit button. You'll see the screen size here based off the scale and resolution that you set. So we're on scale one, this is the size of the iPhone, and this is how big the button will be on the iPhone screen. So let's move it to the center, and there you go. You could also add pan and tilt grids, RGB color wheels, and faders by doing the same thing, attaching them to the same attribute that you want, the same association, and then clicking OK, and you could add them to your screen. Now that's the basics of my DMX3. Those are all the features that are good to know. Maybe you didn't know, maybe you did know, but maybe you learned something else, and if you did, I ask you to leave a like down below, leave a comment if you have any questions on the software or what you thought of this video, and of course, subscribe and hit the bell button so that you know when future videos come out. I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope this helped you in some way. Thanks for watching, once again this is Brandon Havrillo from Red Max Entertainment.